It is now June, and that means it is time to start talking about some of the best albums that have dropped this year. And now is as good a time as any, because over the next couple of weeks we're going to have some releases that may, may shift up the list. So, let's get into it. As always with these lists, it's just my opinion, and my criteria is how often do I listen to the album? And obviously there are going to be albums that I miss, because I can't listen to everything, and I don't listen to everything more than one time. But I'll mention those later on. Uh, also, this list isn't going to be in any particular order. It's mostly chronological. So whatever released first is going to be first. Uh, but I will mention some of the placements as I go through. And like I kind of alluded to, there are some albums that I think are good, and I listen to. Uh, they just didn't quite make this list because I didn't listen to them as much. Or... I didn't listen to them at all, and I feel like they're getting good attention. Uh, also, we'll just start off with the list, because everyone, that's what all y'all care about. Y'all don't care about my thoughts on them, so I have Earl Sweatshirt with Sick, Saba, Few Good Things, Monty Draper, Communion Book One, Crooked Eye, or King Crooked, and Joel Ortiz, The Rise and Fall of Slaughterhouse, Sadistic and No, Bring Me Back When the World is Cured, Denzel Curry, Melt My Eyes to Your Future, Passwords, Flowers. Pusha T, It's Almost Dry, Kendrick Lamar, Mr. Morale, and Brookfield Deuce with Coordinates. Now that we've had that list come out, let's talk about them. So, Earl Sweatshirt's Sick came out in January, and I feel like it's been kind of swept under the rug recently. Like, people don't listen to it as much unless you're really an Earl fan, um, or you just like that sound. I still listen to it every so often. There's a couple tracks that are just always coming back on, and... I just like the whole idea of the album, which I've mentioned a handful of times now, being more of a just a collection of his thoughts over the pandemic period. Uh, so enjoyable album all, all the way through. Uh, the second album I have on here is Saba, A Few Good Things. This dropped in February, I believe it was February 4th. Uh, and honestly, this is still in pretty heavy rotation, like more so than Earl's album. Uh, this I would probably place closer to my top five, if anything, because this album, it's been like, it's been so long since Saba had dropped. So, you know, it's, we've been waiting, but this album is essentially just him retelling a story of Chicago and his family growing up in that area. And it's great. That accompanied with the short film that came out, I believe on the same day, if not the week after, just makes the album make a lot more sense. And it's just a really solid listen. Honestly, like, you can, I can just throw it on and not really even pay attention to what he's saying, and still enjoy it. So, it, it passes just the ride around test, but um, in terms of content, it's definitely there. And I mean, it's Saba, so you kind of know that you're going to get some real content to it. Uh, next up, I have Monty Draper's Communion EP. Now, this is one that I can always throw on as well, and I probably place it pretty high in my list. I'm not too sure exactly where right now, um, but it's... A very short EP, I think it's like six tracks long, um, it's a really easy listen, and yeah, I mean, Monty's the dude, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say, if you haven't checked out this project, definitely do so, I'm sure you'll probably enjoy most of it, I just like riding around to it, it's, the production on it is great, at least in my opinion, uh, like, I just like the heavier bass sounds, and I like just being a menace outside, just have my windows down playing <laughs> loud ass music. Um, next, I had King Crooked and Joel Ortiz with The Rise and Fall of Slaughterhouse, which also dropped in March. March was a pretty busy month, as you can tell. Um, and actually, probably the month that I had the most projects that I enjoyed overall. Um, three of them are on here, so. Uh, but anyways, The Rise and Fall of Slaughterhouse, yes, it sounds like it's just a publicity thing, but there's more to it. The album itself probably could have been titled anything else, but... And, you know, because they talk about so many other things, but the main focus is Slaughterhouse and what happened with all that. And even, like, if you take all the drama out of it, it's still a really good album. Like, like I kind of said, there's not a whole lot of mention about Slaughterhouse except for particular songs where they straight up say what happened. And it sounds like they're pretty cool with Royce. There's mostly issues with Joe, <laughs> and then because of Joe, Royce. So... Regardless, I mean, the project is really solid. I listened to it so much when it came out. Um, and I don't know if that was because I just have a place in my heart for Slaughterhouse. Or, it was, I mean, it was probably just good, honestly, at the end of the day. 
Um, but definitely check that project out too. I would, I'll probably rate this a little bit lower, but just because I listen to it so much and it's just like, all, like I have a lot to say about it. <laughs> I have to include it. Uh, next up, I have Sadistic and No with Bring Me Back When the World is Cured. This dropped on March 31st or April 1st, depending on who you ask. <laughs> um, but this project was really, really interesting. So No and Sadistic have worked together in the past with Phantom Limbs. And that project was one of my favorites. It came out in 20, 2015, I think. Something like that. And, you know, No has been a really solid producer throughout his career if you've never heard of him i mean you may have heard of the cunning linguist and if you have i mean his production is the <laughs> is the production you hear there so it's very good and it's it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly like what it like how to describe it but it's one of those production styles that you can always pick out and like if you're if you're someone else's um song with nose production you're like oh wait no that's that's no production, you can tell. Um, but yeah, no, the project's really solid. It's kind of similar in in idea and like at least big picture to um, Earl's album, Sick. It doesn't quite go into all the whole like the whole pandemic time and all that, but it's more of like the state of the world is weird and crazy. Just bring me back when everything's fixed, sort of vibe. Um, it's definitely not for everyone. I will say that, um, and it's probably the most different album that i have on this list like it's it's a completely different sound i don't i don't know what else to tell you um if you want more information check out the review i did back when it came out because it's still a really good album i listen to it enough <laughs> next up is denzel curry melt my eyes your future i believe this dropped in april and uh it's great it is a phenomenal album i to be fair, I am a really big Denzel Curry fan in general, so anytime he drops, it's pretty much guaranteed that his album's going to be on my list. I I mean, I haven't been as interested in like Unlocked and Zoo, but those are still really good albums. I mean, Taboo, when it came out, was on my top 10 list by the end of the year. So everything Denzel's put out really since the beginning, like even back to Imperial, like that's when I started listening to him. Um, has been great so it is no surprise this is definitely a departure from what he would do previously and I <laughs> I always uh, I'm always reminded of when my friend said man I don't know if I like this album because I tried to listen to it at the gym and it uh it, it made me think <laughs> because Denzel Curry's always known for that just aggressive angry high energy sort of vibe so when you get super introspective on the entire project, uh, well, for the most part, it's um, it definitely throws you for a loop, to say the least. Um, but honestly, this might be, as of right now, this might be number one for me. Um, maybe number two, but it's very, very high up for me. Uh, after this, I have Passwords with Flowers. Passwords, if you don't know, is a battle rapper from Oakland. And actually, a better way to put it is that he is a rapper that happens to battle. Because, you know, the the stigma around battle rappers making albums is always like, oh, they're just going to be all lyrical miracle and go so over your head and just have a bunch of gun bars and punchlines. But that is not the case here at all. <laughs> this is a very introspective and very consistent album. Um, in fact, it's like that the month that it came out, I believe it was one of my most listened projects if not the most and because I, I think it came out at on april 8th or something so pretty early in the month and just all all throughout the month and even now i still throw it on to listen to it like it's a very very introspective album and it's yeah just a good listen like you you should listen to it if you haven't um uh, after this we have push a t with it's almost dry i forgot when that album came out um it's it hasn't been that long but i forgot when it came out regardless though it is also one of my most listened albums actually before i get into push t's album password's album is also very high up too it's probably top three for me uh but then push t uh i listen to it a lot i i, I think the main reason i listen to it a lot is because the per, the production like it's just so much fun to listen to in the car like it's 
the drums are very hard hitting and I don't know. It's just something about that energy that I really like. I mean, at the end of the day, it's Pusha T, and Pusha T is just going to rap about Pusha T things, which has not really changed over the last 20 plus years. Um, but, you know, still very, very solid listen. I think Pusha T can get away with this because he doesn't drop as frequently as other artists with similar subject matter, and he almost sets the bar for that, like, coke rap sort of thing. Like, oh, how's he going to rap about coke this time? What sort of references is he going to pull in now? Like, th- that's the bar. Like, if you can't get to that, you got to be damn close to be good. Um, this is probably also pretty high up, maybe top five. After that, we have Kendrick Lamar with Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Now, this is not an album that I listen to as frequently. I mean, it did just come out about a month ago. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of unfair. Like, it's gotten less play just by default. But it's... An album that I feel a lot of people still don't know how to feel about, and I'm kind of in that same boat. Like, I have no idea where I would rank this in terms of Kendrick's discography, but overall, as an album and as a concept and a story that he's telling us, it's really solid. Obviously, there are tracks that we aren't going to return to frequently, such as um, We Cry Together and Mother I Sober and Auntie Diaries, but the things that he talks about on this are really good and just like earl and kind of like sadistics album it's a reflection over of just some sort of uh some period of time for kendrick this period of time is five years so over these five years he's gone through a lot i mean he literally just says it right off the top um but you know he he talks about a lot of things that he's dealt with and overall it's just it's kind of like therapy for him, which at the end of the day, I hope is a good thing. Well, I mean, I imagine it's a good thing, but I hope it also encourages other people to start going to therapy. Now, the last album I have on this list is Brookfield Deuce with Coordinates. I've actually, I mean, I've done a review which should be out right before this video, um, and I've interviewed Deuce about this project, and I've had a little bit more time to listen to it than um, even Kendrick's album. And it's really just it's a really solid project. I've been listening to it pretty much constantly um since I've had access to it and um since it dropped back um like what two weeks ago now. Um but yeah, it's it's a good project. I mean, I I don't know what else to say. It's enjoyable. I like, it's the biggest takeaway from it, which I've mentioned in the um in the review and Brookfield Deuce had said in the interview itself, is that the coordinates that he's mentioning are essentially like it's a reminder for him to remain in the present and wherever he is at that time that's home and he should be comfortable being at home so you know he mentions all these places that he's been to he even mentions um 310 lennox ave which is a place in harlem so nowhere near the bay um so you know referencing these places and these ideas it's it's weird to think about, I guess. Like, it's really big brain. <laughs> but it also makes a lot of sense. Like, it's one of those things where, yeah, it just makes sense. But then when you try to think about it and understand it for yourself and apply it to yourself, you're like, H- how how can I make this make sense sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, those are the 10? Yeah, that's actually 10 albums that I like and have listened to a lot this year. Um, like I said, the top one is probably Denzel Curry's album followed by Passwords and Pusha T, something like that. Um, But, you know, lists change all the time. Now, the other thing that I said I was going to talk about are albums that I listen to, but not as much, and still think they should get a shout-out, as well as some projects that I didn't really listen to, but have been getting attention. So, Big Crit, Digital Roses Don't Die. I listened to it a couple times. It wasn't my cup of tea, because I was expecting more of... um, what is last, not his last project, but the one before that. Um, damn, I'm drawing a blank now. But I was expecting a different sound than what we got. It, w- it wasn't bad by any means, but it was different for sure. He definitely went more soulful, if I remember correctly. Uh, also, we have D. Bledsoe with uh, The Rich and Saucy. Really solid short project. I just haven't listened to it as much as some of the other tapes on here. Um, still, enjoyable project. And Conway the Machine, God Don't Make Mistakes, 
I personally did not really care for it as much, which is why I didn't even review it. Um, I think just there was there was too high of an expectation, in my opinion, at least for me. So that if it, since it didn't meet it, I was like, okay, well, it's whatever. It's still a good project, and I know a lot of people enjoy it, and I know other people rate it very favorably. But um, in my opinion, I don't enjoy it as much. Um, Conway definitely gets a lot more open on this, but you know, like I said, it's. Not my favorite Conway tape. In fact, I, I almost feel like his mixtape that he dropped before this was more enjoyable, but that's just me. Um, also, Benny the Butcher, Tanner Talk 4. Same deal. Like, I had very high expectations, especially with Johnny P's Caddy being the lead single. And then when we got the project, it was something a little bit different. Like, I was expecting more of that soul sound to carry through. Which would have been dope. I would love to hear Benny rap over more soulful samples and beats like that. Um, like for a whole tape. Um, but, you know, it wasn't as good in my opinion. And the fact that it is a sequel to one of his best projects, Panatalk 3, the expectations were even higher. <laughs> same thing, like, it's basically the same issue that I had with Conway's project. Again, not a bad project. It's just, eh. Um, Earth Gang, Ghetto Gods, that was another... Th- project that <laughs> it was another expectations thing because the singles that were le- like released leading up to it were really good and I really enjoyed them um, but then when I listened to the project I was like eh I, I didn't like it as much I enjoyed Mirrorland a little bit more um, but this, that's not to say that this is a bad product the rapping is perfect I think it was just the the production and what I went in expecting I was expecting something else essentially um uh, Fly Anakin with Frank, I didn't listen to it as much, so I can't say a whole lot, but I do know a lot of people really like it. So, check it out. Um, I, I do remember listening to the single that had Madlib production and really enjoyed that. Um, I just, I only listened to it like one or two times, so I can't really comment too much on it. Then we had the Dreamville mixtape, D-Day. Um, <laughs> honestly, as a mixtape, it's fine. It's fine. As a project, like an album, eh, I wouldn't consider it anything crazy. But, you know, it was it was a fun listen and a good reminder that Dreamville Dreamville knows what's going on. They got a lot of heavy hitters there. Uh, it, it Yeah, I almost was going to treat it like a follow-up to Revenge of the Dreamers 3, but then I had to remember and remind myself that it was a mixtape. And that we're not, it's not necessarily going to be, like, way up there. Um, the other, another project that I didn't listen to at all, actually, and still need to listen to, is Billy Woods, Ethiopes. Ethiopes? Yeah. Like, I haven't I haven't heard anything bad about it, but I also haven't really gone out of my way to hear anything, like, review-wise. But it's supposed to be good, so check it out. I mean, I, I've been meaning to. Well, I just need to find some time. <laughs> uh, Vince Staples, Ramona Park, Broke My Heart. I just wanted to mention this because it was, it was good. It was a bit... It was similar in... Like, similar to the Vince Staples project that he dropped last year, but... A little bit more depressing, if that makes sense. Like, it wasn't bad. Uh, Magic was a really solid single, but I don't know. I just didn't go back to it as much. I wasn't as it, it didn't grab me as much as uh, Vince Staples did in the in his last album. And then the last one that I wanted to mention was Quelly Chris with Death Fame. I listened to this a couple of times, um, not enough again to form an opinion because Quelly Chris is someone that you really gotta pay attention to what he's saying because. There's so much going on with the the per, between the production and what he's saying. Like you gotta really take your time and understand what he's saying. Um, but I've heard a lot of people talking good about it. I just need to actually sit down and really dig into it. Um, but those are the projects that I wanted to mention so far that I haven't listened to as much, and yeah, all that. Um, also, this list is really just up until the beginning of June. So obviously, there have been projects that have dropped since then. Um, but they, I don't think I really cared for any of them. So I just didn't even bother <laughs> checking them out. Um, but yeah, that's what I, that's what I got. Those are some of my albums, the top 10 and then some other albums I listened to. Uh, yeah. Let me know in the comments below what albums you have on your top 10 list so far. Um, you don't have to list it in any order. And then also let me know what other albums I should check out. Uh, obviously I mentioned a bunch of other ones, but you know, I'm open to listening to more. Uh, while you're down there, why don't you uh, like and subscribe to see more content and rambles like this. Thank you for watching and please stay safe out there.